Hi. We have a problem. I needed an extra soldering iron the other day, and of course the lab's not completely set up yet, so the soldering bench and soldering room's not uh, completely set up. So I reached into one of my uh, boxes that has all my soldering gear in it from the old lab, and I went, oh yeah, this weller will do, I'll just plug that in, just need something quick. And it started flashing on the screen, and I thought, Oh, that's kind of weird. Like something's going on. Is there, you know, a contact thing with the IM probe or something? And in the couple of seconds it took me to process that, wah, 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 smoke started billowing. And I'm talking like this wide. It just started billowing right out the bottom of the, <laughs> this poor old Weller soldering station here. And then I quickly remembered, oops, it is a 120 volt version. And of course, we've got 240 volts here in Australia. So, yeah. Um, I wish this was smell -a vision because if you could smell this, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> got that magic smoke smell. All the magic smoke escaped from this thing. So, I thought we'd uh, take it apart. And I may not be able to repair it, but yeah, oops. And I think almost every soldering iron on the market is, like, uses a transformer-based system. They are a fixed voltage. Like, some of them might have a voltage tap that you could change or something like that, but none of them that I'm aware of anyway, offhand, um, use a switch mode uh, converter to get, like, a universal input mains voltage. And that's probably because I would guess that uh, they really, you know, we've got like a large power heater, like a 50 watt or a 100 watt heater switching off and on rapidly and stuff like that. And switching a load like that, a 50 or 100 watt load, isn't great for like a switch mode uh, power supply. So it's probably just easier and better performance uh, just to use a transformer. And of course it gives the thing a bit of heft. So there's nothing wrong with the Weller. Um, it was a Pebcac. It was me. So let's crack this thing open and see what damage we've done. But by the amount of smoke that escaped from this thing, oh, it's not pretty. And of course, the active ingredient inside all electronic components, including transformers and everything else, is the magic smoke. And once the magic smoke escapes, doesn't work anymore. Ah, damn it. And of course, I've done a previous teardown video on this thing, so let's have a look. Nothing obvious on the, uh, well, there's nothing obvious at all. That's terribly disappointing, isn't it? Not, oh God, that smell is, ugh, that smell is horrible. Anyway, I can't see, let's check. Let's get the board out and have a look on there because it did all waft out this front vent, this bottom vent here, and the smoke was like, it must have like filled up all in here, and then um, the pressure of it just like pushed it all out, and it billowed in a big wide billow of smoke coming out. So, all right, let's have a look. Uh, wow, I'm not seeing anything. See any blowholes or anything like that? What's, what's going on? Ah, oh, this is, Incredibly disappointing. Where is the magic smoke escape from? There's only one electrolytic uh, cap in here, which is a non-vented one. It doesn't have the, like the little, um, you know, marks on there. The uh, vent marks, the score marks. So that must be one of those solid uh, electrolyte caps. Oh, yep, I'm just absolutely stunned that nothing is blowing on here. So I can only presume that must have come out of the transformer. It was an awful amount of smoke and it came out within like two, three seconds. It started billowing out of this thing and it was a ton of smoke. It was unbelievable. And of course, I just, you know, reflex reaction pulled the mains cord at the back of the thing. And, uh, and then I actually, what I did is I actually, once I made sure it wasn't physically a light, I actually um, shoved it in a box to uh, stop the, all the smoke billowing out. But there's nothing wrong with that main board there. Like if the power tranny here was blowing, you'd expect to see like a big blowhole in it or something like that. But yep, I can only presume that the smoke came out of the transformer. And sure enough, if I actually uh, smell that board, there's like no sign of it whatsoever. So yeah, I think that is just hunky-dory. Must have all come out of the transformer. And sure enough, if you smell the transformer, yeah, that's where the, uh, that's where the magic smoke escaped from. So I can only presume that it uh, like burnt the enamel off the uh, wires. Once that amount of smoke escapes, 
from something like a transformer, even if it even if I powered this up again and it worked, I wouldn't trust it because that smoke came from, it must have come from the uh, you know the the laminated wires on there. So that just breaks down the insulation. Yeah, not a good thing. So I would <laughs> I would not trust that and reuse it even if it worked after uh, a smoking overload like this. And you can see that this does have both uh, fuse and uh, poly switch protection. But unfortunately, this is only on the secondary side of the transformer here. You can see over here, this is a 120 volt, a fixed 120 volt transformer. So you can't like just uh, choose another tap and convert these from 120 into 240. There's the mains input, goes straight through the switch straight into the primary side of the transformer there. So yeah, that's where it must have smoked on the primary side. So let's just measure some stuff here. The uh, secondary side of the transformer, you'd expect it to be like, you know, an ohm, sub an ohm, something like that, bugger all, 0.3 ohms, yep, something like that. That's fine, is our fuse intact? So our fuse did blow by the looks of it, yep, that, that protected that, no worries. And then a poly switch. Uh, there, yeah, there we go. So that's low, but that fuse has blown. So it looks like that protected the uh, secondary side of it. Hence why we don't, you know, well, there's no visible signs of damage. Doesn't mean we, you know, doesn't mean that this thing is not damaged. You know, you'd have to uh, power it up with uh, some AC here and uh, do it that way. But um, uh, uh, we've got another fuse on there. Let's measure that baby. There we go, that fuse is intact, so yep, that's fine. So and this uh, design is quite good from a secondary side uh, protection uh, point of view. So that board, but unfortunately, there's just nothing on the primary side. The primary side is not fused at all. And I assume that's legal, because Weller wouldn't do otherwise. I assume it's legal in, it might vary in other countries, but there's no fusing at all. I don't think I actually mentioned that in my uh, review at all of this thing and uh, tear down previously but now it's 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 obvious there is no primary side fusing and they should at least have an integrated uh, fuse with the holder and that probably would have uh, what well, should have if you f uh, size the fuse correctly should have uh, at, at least you know stopped it but anyway let's measure the primary side because I'm pretty sure that's where the magic scope smoke escape from and of course primary side uh, transformers you'd expect like you know tens of ohms hundreds of ohms that kind of thing but uh <laughs> wah, wah, wah. 0.2 ohms um yeah that's a lot um get your calculator out i'll leave that for an experiment from home but like 0.2 ohms calculate uh 240 or 110 volts across 0.2 ohms how much power is that bueller bueller so obviously what's happening inside there is there's going to be some uh, enamel burnt off the insulation inside there. So it might be time for a teardown of that. And for those who want to see, let's uh, compare it with a ripoff, uh, Heiko FX uh, 951. This is a uh, 240 volt version, but of course the primary side transformer will be in the tens or hundreds of ohms category. And there we go, 64 ohms. By the way, these rip-off Heiko FX 951s are absolute garbage. I haven't opened it yet, but I used it on a live uh, stream video assembling that Gigatron board, and it was just utter trash. So we can get these caps off here. They're all, they're sort of, oh yeah. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, that poor prom primary side transformer. And you can tell it's the primary side, by the way. Uh, for those who don't know, the secondary side in a step-down transformer, which is uh, most uh, products, the secondary side is going to have uh, thicker wire in there because it's like it's stepping down so higher current. Whereas the um, oh, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic! Oh, there we go! Oh, that's more spectacular than a than a uh, component than a blowhole in a. Uh, like output uh, transistor, isn't it? Wow, look at all the, yep, all the enamels burn off that. Anyway, uh, thinner wire on the uh, primary side. Wow. No wonder it's shorted. Look at that. So that's what happens when you apply like 240 volts 
to a 110 volt transformer. And this could have been prevented if they had a fuse, because this thing could have, like, you know, could have caught on fire. Imagine if I turned it on and then, uh, like, walked away and, and didn't realize and went to the bathroom or something, and, you know, this thing could have, like, complete, like, that would have been 240 volts just uh, delivering, pumping the power into this thing. But my uh, mains fuse did actually uh, eventually blow. I'm not sure how uh, long after it actually uh, blew. But anyway, um, you know, you could maybe fix it by, but you'd have to rewind the whole damn thing. There's just, like, it's silly. Anyway, if you haven't seen uh, Transformer construction before, this is what's called an E-Core uh, Transformer. It gets its name from the shape of the laminations. These are the laminations. You can see all the different, you know, count how many laminations are in there. Anyway, uh, it gets its name from the shape of the lamination. In this case, you can't see it, but there's another part of this core, this laminate. You can see it's broken there and there. It goes around like that, like a C, but it's actually got a center one that goes through. So it's actually shaped like an E, the letter E. So it's like E and I, it's called. Um, and the, you can see that they just weld the I part onto the E part there. So that's how, and there's just the center lamination goes through like that. And then they wind the primary and the secondary in separate uh, plastic enclosures like this, and they have the electrical separation. So that's the electrical isolation between your primary and your secondary here. So yeah, that's uh, typical for a mains transformer. I wonder if there's anything on the bottom. Let's get that out of there. Oh yeah, yep. <laughs> just as crusty on the bottom as it is on the top or the top this is the top yes yeah, sorry um <laughs> all the poor enamel coated wire so that was the that's the smell in this thing it's the burnt enamel and wow you can just yeah like it just turns into this brown really i don't i don't know if i've actually seen that like burnt in to, to that extent before i've seen like little you know blow holes in uh transformers and stuff like that but this one is like completely like consistently burnt uh the secondary side is also is, is of course uh completely intact and of course we would have got initially we would have got double the voltage out of but you know the fuse probably kicked in or maybe it no it did actually because i said there was something on the lcd because it actually flashed something on the LCD. I can't remember what it was. It was just a couple of characters or... Um, so it looked like the processor was actually working. It Then, yeah, <laughs> panic set in and I uh, pulled the mains plug. So, <laughs> yeah. But isn't that terrific? I love it. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't plug 214 volts into 110. And yes, I should have labeled this. I know it's labeled on the bottom, but I should have put a huge label on the top of the unit. Stupid me, lazy me. Didn't do that. But of course, for these circumstances where I just needed an extra iron somewhere, you know, I, I'm going to pick up just any, you know, random iron that's um, sitting around. So, yeah, I, I, I did know. Like, I did know this. I was just too lazy to do it. And, ah, oh, she'll be right. I'll remember that it's 110. So, yeah, that was a pebcac. Don't do that. And I know what you're thinking, Dave, does the controller still work? All right, well, let's find out. Um, as per the labeling on here, uh, 120 volt primary, 23 volt secondary, uh, 60 hertz, and it should be fine, 50 or 60. I can generate that with my abso pulse generator here. Uh, 23 volts secondary, 60 hertz. So let's plug that in and see what's what. We're probably going to get some like drops on these leads and stuff like that, especially if you use the heater. But I've got the heater unplugged. So, hey. Hello. There you go. LCD works. Let's plug the uh, iron in. Yeah, it's happy with that. It's set for 270. We'll just leave it at that. That's fine. It's not going anywhere. Oh, it's dropped a... Yeah, 15 up there. So, yeah, we're getting some loss in the leads. Did it normally take... Hey, it's going up. Did it normally take that long to start up? Anyway, that's looking good. That's looking good. She's heating up. Not going to touch it. I'm going to assume that the uh, thermocouple in the tip is still good. And uh, that... It should. You can see it's delivering uh, power. That's what the little, little uh, uh, lightning bolt icon there is and uh will it get to will it get to 270 
Should maybe start to be able to melt. So, yeah. There you go. It's melting solder. Will it actually get to 270 and regulate? Yep. Yep. No problem. The little uh, icon thing is flashing off and on. There you go. Works a treat. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Good on you. Um, Weller, it's obviously a, like a, a robust designed secondary. The fuse did its job on the uh, transformer here, kicked in, but obviously like the power tranny, everything else was um, robust enough to uh, survive double volts on the secondary. Nice. And well, I've got to ask, like, how did this actually happen? Um, because you're plugging 240 volts into a 110 volt uh, transformer, double the voltage on the output, of course, that means for a resistive, like, element load that we've got here, roughly, like, that's going to be four times the power. So, okay, it's going to be delivering four times the power, but surely, like, this thing started smoking literally, like, two or three seconds after I plugged it in. So even if it, like, because it, it would have probably started applying power to the heating element uh, straight away. So how it was able to just like completely melt the insulation like that after a couple of seconds at four times the power, I don't know. Is it a transformer design issue? Of course, it should be fused. I reckon that's a, uh, that's a bad mistake there is not having the primary side transformer fuse especially when it could be quite common to you know to sell these things in different regions that are different voltages it's not like oh you're going to suddenly plug a 240 volt iron into 600 volts mains or something like that you know that doesn't really uh, exist that's not going to happen but accidentally plugging a 115 a 120 into a 240 that's certainly possible so certainly should be fuse worthy but is there not enough uh, enamel insulation on the primary side is it a poor design transformer i don't know but geez like wouldn't have expected that really oopsie <laughs> if you like the video and my screw up give it a thumbs up because that always helps a lot and discuss down below if you've got like photos or anything of stuff that uh like mains transformers that you've burned out or other products you burn out when you incorrectly hooked up the wrong mains voltage. There's a problem here in Australia. We get a lot of, you know, if you import a lot of stuff, you'll get 110 volts uh, used test equipment on eBay. You've got to be very careful importing it here. And it's not a problem. You Yanks wouldn't have uh, too much or, you know, who else uses uh, 110 volts? Um, but you guys wouldn't have too many problems because you import stuff. And if you're a 240 volt product, you hook it up to 110, meh. You know, the magic smoke like this isn't going to escape. It's just going to, like even not power up or you know have reduced performance or whatnot so there's a lot of power behind a uh, <laughs> 240 volt mains in fact there's 2400 watts um or even more before the main fuse will blow anyway like i think i've got a 16 amp uh breaker here for my uh 240 volt nominal and uh, well it, 230 volt nominal i actually get a bit over 240 volts in the uh, lab here, which is still within specification. Anyway, there's a lot of power behind that, and it kept on delivering it, and probably a thumbs down to Weller for not including any mains fusing in that. I, yeah, not sure if I mentioned that in the previous review. I'll have to have a look. Anyway, yeah, that could have prevented my lab almost burning down. And luckily, the smoke alarm here didn't go off. Because um, if it did, it would have cost me about 1800 bucks for the uh, <laughs> fire engine call-out. Anyway, <laughs> if you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time. Hello.